Well, you in Punaziwa, she mutsumes krumos pentru acesta ocazia. Mabukur savordesk kutine, she pentru ka avem putsin tim voivorbi in limba inglesa. My name is Dean Thompson. I'm the uh, Charge Affairs at the U.S. Embassy in Bucharest. I've been here uh, in Bucharest for about three months now. I've been a U.S. diplomat for almost 21 years. Frankly, it's one of the most exciting journeys I think I could have imagined for my life. Um, I, uh, I grew up not far outside of Washington, D.C. My father was working in international affairs in the private sector uh, with the education educational exchanges and that type of, of work. Uh, my mother was a housewife, but then as my sister and I grew older, became an entrepreneur, started her own business, and began working with, um, uh, you know, in the United States we, we've had an aging population and, and more and more services required by the elderly. And so my mother started a business to help provide some of those services and eventually employed about 25 nurses and different care providers as, as she grew her business. So um, I, I was very fortunate. I grew up in a very uh, nice home uh, with a nice family that was very supportive of me um, and encouraged me to you know, do well in school, uh, pursue my dreams, and uh, I get to live them out now. And uh, it's a real honor for me at this stage in my life to frankly be able to represent my country, live in a beautiful country like Romania, uh, and share some of my experience with people as, as I move around. Um, if I think about more broadly where I came from, uh, my uh, parents were both from the state of Michigan, which is a very northern, one of the northernmost states in the U.S. My uh, grandfather on my mother's side was a janitor in a, in a college there. Um, my other grandfather owned a small general store and my parents were both the first people from their uh, families, respective families, to go on to college. Uh, my father actually then went on to graduate school, so education was always an extraordinarily important part of growing up in our home. And uh, I'm very grateful for that now because if for no other reason it really instilled a lifelong desire to learn explore, ask questions, ask why and why not, <laughs> and move, uh, move in those types of directions. Um, I decided to get into diplomacy about halfway, well, maybe three quarters of the way through college. I was studying political science and I, as people have noted here, uh, I studied a bit of Russian area studies. Uh, and after my graduate work, I went to work in our Defense Department for about a year and a half doing some work on arms control and things like that. And I enjoyed the work very much, but as I traveled around for negotiations and meetings and I would meet people from the embassies, I really felt like this is what I'd like to do. I'd like to have the, the privilege and the opportunity to represent our country overseas, uh, to work on, on these issues uh, and meet people from all over the world and do that. What you might find a little funny about that choice of career though is I'm not naturally a lover of change and so I chose a job where I would force myself to change almost every two to three years um, and that's been a that's been a challenge for me uh, one that I'm glad I've developed you know a skill to overcome and, and, and work on but uh, uh, still every, every once in a while I have to psych myself up again and say okay, I've got to do something new, I'm going to have to start the learning curve all over again. And that's both exciting and scary sometimes, but I'm, I'm grateful to have had the chance to do it. Um, I think, you know, one of the things that I'd like to share with, uh, with young people in terms of, um, as, as I now have an opportunity to lead groups of people, um, one, of the, one of the questions we get asked a lot is how do we motivate uh, people and, and what types of tools do we use for that and I think that there's been a lot of research done into what how people are motivated and you know, for a long time we thought it was money and we thought it was material reward 
And as they've dug more and more, they've found that as you get into more um, uh, thoughtful pursuits, like like you know we might be in in diplomacy and uh, foreign affairs and things like that, that what motivates people is that chance to to work hard on a project and come to their own conclusions about things. And so what I try to do is provide a, uh, an environment where people can pursue issues that are of interest to them, um, let them work the puzzle for a while, uh, provide opportunities for them to come in and ask questions or talk about how to move next, but really let them do that. Because then they take on ownership and they feel it's their project. And when we, when we have ownership of something, we naturally, I think, take it. Uh, the next step every time. And so that's been fun to watch and see, see things like that unfold. Um, in terms of meeting challenges that come up, I have a, a, a picture uh, at home that will go in my office soon, uh, just arrived in my packing, you know, my materials that were packed out. But it's a, it's a stork, you know, the big bird with the, with the long legs and the big beak, with a frog in its mouth. And the frog is holding on to that stork's neck like crazy and it says never ever give up <laughs> and uh, I love that picture and it's just it, it sort of defines how I look at problems uh, when they come up you have to work them work them hard work them continuously and try to find every possible way to get to a solution um, it's important to stay focused it's important to stay positive um, I had the great honor to work for uh, one of our former Secretary of State's Colin Powell's Colin Powell, and you know, he had a, a list of, of rules, and one of his rules was optimism as a force multiplier. And I've really come to decide that's true uh, over the course of my career. Um, what else can I tell you? Um, as far as advice that I would give to the youth anywhere, but especially here in Romania, um, I think it would be go out, explore, try new things, never ever be afraid to fail, uh, but if you do fail, learn from it. Find out why. Why didn't it work? What, was, what, what could have been done better? And then try again. And if it doesn't work that time, try again. Um, we have so many examples through history of people that, uh, that you know, were on the wrong, the wrong side of a project or the wrong side of getting something uh, accomplished. Uh, but kept going and kept going and kept going and ultimately succeeded. And so um, that's one of the most important things that I think I can share with young people uh, when I talk to them is the importance of just never giving up.